actually starting to see proof of the profound impact that even non-AGI artificial intelligence may be about to have on the economy and society. So in one example of this, we actually just got an announcement from a company called Klarna, which is a massive uh, payments company in e-commerce. And they just revealed that they now have an AI assistant that does the jobs of 700 employees. The AI assistant is powered by OpenAI, and it basically just handles customer service chats across the platform. So it can chat with customers to do things like, say, resolve customer service requests in different languages and help you manage refunds and returns. Klarna claims that in just one month of this thing being live globally, the assistant is already doing the work of 700 full-time agents. And so far, it's conducted 2.3 million conversations, which the company says is a full two-thirds of the customer service chats it regularly handles. Not to mention, it seems like this AI assistant is doing pretty solid work. They say that it produces customer satisfaction scores that are on par with human agents, and it's more accurate and much faster at resolving customer requests. So Klarna says the average time to resolve requests dropped from 11 minutes to two minutes, which is pretty significant. Overall, the company claims that this AI assistant in 2024 alone is going to create an additional $40 million in profit. Now, as you might expect, Corona's CEO talked all this up in press release, but what I found really interesting is that he also basically just came out and hinted that society needs to prepare for advanced AI like this. This is to be very clear, not AGI, but even very hyper uh, competent artificial intelligence is something we really need to pay attention to. He said, quote, we are incredibly excited about this launch, but it also underscores the profound impact on society that AI will have. We want to reemphasize and encourage society and politicians to consider this carefully. And we believe that a considerate, informed and steady stewardship will be critical to navigate through this transformation of our societies. I thought that was a sort of deep and ponderous way to end a press release overall on a new AI assistant that you're using. So like we said, this isn't AGI. This isn't proof of AGI at all. This is simply an illustration of the profound impact that even non-AGI can kind of have on knowledge work as we know it. And in the process, I think it shines a little bit of a light on what's coming. So, Paul, I wanted to kind of ask you, like, can you unpack for us a little bit the impact that we're potentially going to see in society and the economy from extremely competent AI and who knows, maybe even AGI after that? Yeah, you and I have I talked a lot about this idea that we don't need AGI to see massive disruption and transformation in the economy and the workforce and business and education and society. And, and that's really what we are trying to get people to think more critically about is kind of more of like the near term, like one to two years. So when this technology keeps getting smarter, and we're going to talk about a few things that have happened in the last few days in rapid fire, um, where this is occurring again, like the models are taking leaps there. We're starting to see more GPT four level and beyond models coming into our lives. And as those emerge, like, what does that mean? What does it mean when it's actually adopted into enterprises? AGI, like I've advised some bigger tech firms and some other companies to have kind of an AGI horizons team within their organization. Um, and the premise there is you should be thinking about it. Like we should be having these conversations around what happens if we get to AGI, but I, I wouldn't be dedicating the majority of my resources at that moment to that. I would be trying to figure out what do we do with the current and near-term AI that we are aware of, that we know is true. And what does that mean to us? And there's just not enough companies doing that. So I think within like the context of this Klarna news, we have to keep in mind it is a company release. It's they didn't like release an open you know report about this and drill into all the specifics. So we have to kind of take them at their word that this is um, all true. Um, it is a small sample of like one month of global release. 
but it it does align with what we're expecting to see as we move forward in 2024. We think we're going to start seeing a lot more examples of this where there's case studies from companies that have actually adopted and infused AI into specific processes or roles that start to see massive impact. And customer service in particular is the one we've been waiting for because in March 2023, in an interview with Lex Friedman, um, when discussing categories of jobs that could be massively impacted by AI, Sam Altman, who usually is elusive when it comes to talking about these kinds of things and specific jobs, um, he said, and I quote, I guess I would say customer service is a category that I could see there are just way fewer jobs relatively soon. Now, again, the Klarna News, I mean, they had a, um, uh, a quote in there from the COO of OpenAI. Like they've obviously been working with OpenAI for a while on this project. And so it's not uh, unexpected that Sam had a foresight to say like, hey, this is an area where we think there's going to be some pretty significant impact. Um, so then related, you and I recently saw a quote that had us bidding, doing a bit of a, a double take, um, if not a quadruple take. So um, there's, a, there's a website called raijourney.ai that I would suggest people go check out. So this is from a, a couple of guys that I recently got to know. So Adam Brotman, who's the co-founder and co-CEO of Forum3, he's the former chief digital officer at Starbucks and also a uh, former president, chief experience officer, and co-CEO at J.Crew. <clears throat> he and Andy Sack, who is a co-founder and also co-CEO of Forum3, uh, founder and managing partner of Keen Capital, and a former advisor to Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella, um, as well as building and selling a number of technology companies. So these are super legit guys in the tech world, in the business world. Um, and they started this, this really interesting project called RAI Journey, where they realized the impact the AI was going to have on the world, uh, kind of after the chat GPT moment, like, like many people in business. And they wanted to start figuring out what does this mean? But instead of just going and researching and writing a book for 12 months, they're doing it in the open. They're basically like doing these fascinating interviews, and then they're going to publish it as they go. So this is, it's kind of, um, there's like monthly insights, there's new chapters they're going to release as they do interviews, and then there's going to be uh, interactive components and exclusive content. So it sounds cool, but their first interview happened to be in November with Sam Altman, um, followed by an interview with Reid Hoffman, which I'll talk about in a minute. So. So after talking with Andy and Adam, I, I go and read the introduction, which is called the tidal wave. And so, um, I'll just read th this part because this is the thing where Mike and I were just kind of dumbfounded. So they say in the introduction starts with the story of their interview with Sam Altman in October, 2023. So it was like one month roughly before he was fired. During the meeting, they asked him because Sam started talking about AGI right away. And, and they said, when you say AGI, what do you mean? And he replied and said, that's a fair question. And I would say it's when AI will be able to achieve novel scientific breakthroughs on its own. So now Adam and Andy were pretty like straightforward that they weren't really that familiar with this concept, like really deep understanding of AGI. Um, so the, the chapter goes on and said, they said, we replied, okay, wow, that's sort of wild. Now, not sure exactly what that means, but what do you think AGI will mean for us and for consumer brand marketers trying to create ad campaigns and the like to build their company? So again, they're coming at this as marketers and business people, and they're talking to Sam and Sam's around AGI, and they're trying to figure out, like, whoa, what does this all mean? So they ask him specifically, what does it mean for us? To which Sam replied, and I quote, oh, for that? It will mean that 95% of what marketers use agencies, strategists, and creative professionals for today will easily, nearly instantly, and at almost no cost be handled by the AI. And the AI will likely be able to test the creative against real or synthetic customer focus groups for predicting results and optimizing. Again, all free, instant, and nearly perfect images, videos, campaign ideas, no problem. So I mean, this is like on page two of the introduction. So I'm just like, I go back and reread this thing. I'm like, how have I not heard this quote anywhere? Like, wh why isn't this 
in like all the major media outlets as a quote, because Sam doesn't say this kind of stuff directly. So the, the, the authors then say, okay, cause they had a short time with Sam and he's kind of dropping this on them and they're trying to process what in the world he's talking about. So they say one last question and they, they asked him quote about when do you think AGI will be a reality? And Sam said five years, give or take, maybe slightly longer, but no one knows exactly when or what it will mean for society. And then the rest of the introduction kind of goes on, but I don't know, Mike, what I had told you about this and I was like, you'll know, I didn't tell you what the quote was. I said, you will know what I'm talking about as soon as you read this. So when you saw it, what was your first reaction? Yeah. Within four seconds, I sent you a screenshot of the quote. Like, this <laughs> is it, right? Because yeah, to your point, we follow Sam Altman pretty closely and I certainly can't quote off the top of my head every statement he's ever made, but this is a degree of candor and specificity, especially about marketing in particular, which we obviously have a vested interest in, that I have not seen at all before. And I realize that a lot of the topics that we cover on this podcast, we have to separate the PR, the marketing of some of these companies trying to raise money and justify valuations from reality. But I think you have to take seriously when someone who has as much on the line as Altman does when he says a specific timeline and is talking about the types of activities that he has talked about, like clearly, even if he's wrong, he believes this. And it is very, very sobering to read that quote, I would say. And I would say also, I don't know if this is where he's coming from or if it is happenstance that these align. But one of the formative books I know for me and you, Paul, when we first started this whole journey was Ray Kurzweil, who makes tons of predictions about the singularity. The singularity is near is one of his big books. And the predictions sound, frankly, completely insane in mm -hmm. terms of how quickly technology will develop and where exponential technology growth will lead us. His first quoted prediction is for AGI in 2029, which is five years from today. So it's pretty interesting that maybe, according to Altman, Kurzweil could be right. But yeah, I would say it really floored, it made me sit up and pay attention. We talk about this stuff 24 hours a day. This one made me say, oh my gosh, it was like a chat GPT moment where it's like, oh wait, this might be here. It yeah. might be now that all these things we have theorized are coming to pass. And I have to start acting with that level of urgency, perhaps. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when I do talks and, you know, our intro to AI class or keynotes, I, I always talk about the impact on knowledge work. And what I've been saying recently is at least 80% of what knowledge workers do will be AI assisted to some degree in the next one to two years. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. going to be infused within the software we use. And I'm, I've been fairly confident in that projection in large part, because if you look at all the tech we're using, it's all like, you're not going to have software that doesn't have AI infused into it. But AI assistance, kind of level one, you know, level two-ish, is one thing. Going back to this quote, it will mean that 95% of what marketers use agencies, strategists, and creative professionals for today will easily, nearly instantly, and at almost no cost, be handled by the AI. Um, it's a hard thing to wrap our minds around. And honestly, like I haven't really had time to sit back and think about this at a more, you know, a deeper level and try and project out almost like, like the AGI horizons thing I was talking about earlier. Like, yeah. what does that mean? So I, I think it's probably just, we'll probably like leave it here and, and give people time to maybe process this themselves a little bit. Um, Definitely something we're going to come back to on the show. And again, the RAI Journey uh, site, raijourney.ai. It is a paid program, but again, just judging by the first interview with Sam, and then this chapter one is with Reed Hoffman from December of 2023. Well, Reed is the COO of PayPal, which is where his connection to Musk comes in because Musk was one of the co-founders of PayPal. Um, he's the co-founder of LinkedIn, which he sold to Microsoft. He's a Microsoft board member, and he's the co-founder of Inflection with Mustafa Solomon one of the co-founders of DeepMind, and they raised $1.3 last year to build language models. So Reed is as tapped in as probably anyone in the world with the current and future state of AI. So just to know that 
Andy and Adam have access to these people and, and they're going to be putting out these kinds of interviews. We have no stake in the game here. It's not like, you know, I, I benefit from you going and getting their stuff, but like, I'm hooked. Like that was my reply to the, when I had the introduction. I was like, all right, you got me. I'm in like, let me know when the next chapters are coming out. So, um, just something to keep an eye on. And I get, this is kind of like a, a really big topic and a hard thing to process. And so we'll do our best in the coming months to sort of try and unpack this a little bit. 